What's going on guys, Aussie here and welcome back to a brand new video. So today we have got the new player of the month for the La Liga and it is going to be Oyoza Bell, I believe is how you pronounce it. But I'm not going to be saying that throughout the whole, you know, throughout the whole video. I'll be stuttering like there's no tomorrow. So I am just going to call him Mikel and that is going to be his first name. This card, by the way, looks amazing. I did pay around 70k, so you, you guys are probably going to pay 70, 80k if you don't have untradables. But... Is it worth it? That's what we're here to find out. 86 pace, 88 dribbling, 88 shooting, 87 passing with the 67 physical as well. By just looking at those stats right there, you can definitely say it's 100% worth it because he looks insane. 5 foot 11 is not a bad height for a winger at all. The high medium work rate is something I'm always going to enjoy. Just pretty much him staying higher than expected, going for that quick counter attack, especially with his kind of pace. 3 star skill moves is something I'm not a fan of. But we are going to have to deal with it today. So we'll just put that to a side for now. Three star weak foot. I'm okay with that. I don't mind three star weak foot too much this year. Obviously, it's not as good as the four or five star. But, you know, it is not terrible. It's not as bad as it was last year. Let's just say that. Hunter chem style. 10 chem. The reason I went for Hunter is because he is a winger, right? A winger needs pace. No matter what. They need pace. So 95 acceleration. 96 sprint speed is going to be more than enough. But the only problem is, with while you're giving him a Hunter chem style... You're kind of leaving out the dribbling stats because he's got 90 dribbling, which is absolutely insane. But the 85 agility and the 84 balance can definitely get upgraded. So do you want to go for an engine? Do you want to go for finisher? Do you want to go for anything else? That is your decision. But for me personally, I've gone for a Hunter Kim style. 94 attacking positioning, 99 finishing with the 91 shot power. He does also have the outside foot shot trait, which is something I did not expect. And I feel like it will come into play. The majority of the time, especially with that weaker foot not being amazing. He has got 87 long shots, 93 volleys and 99 penalties. They kind of sell you a little bit when it comes down to passing. So you see that 87, you know, 87 passing on the card. You think to yourself, that long passing, that short passing, everything is pretty much going to locker. Then you actually click on him and he's got 79 long passing. Yeah, then you think to yourself, rah. Have I been scammed? What's happening here? Have I actually been scammed? But you kind of have been at the same time because he has got 92 vision, 88 short passing, 89 crossing. So he is going to be those, uh, be able to do those RBXs towards back stick. But he is going to be able to do a little, you know, one, two, stick attacker play, RBAs. Th those should be perfectly fine on him. Dribbling, 85 agility, 84 balance, 86 reactions, 89 ball control, 90 dribbling and 80 composure. The only thing I can definitely say I am scared there is going to be the 80 composure. I'm not sure how he's going to obviously, you know, shoot at very tight angles. Is he going to be calm and composed or is he going to panic on the ball? It's something we're going to have to find out. When it comes down to physicals, this is probably the weak point when it comes down to Mikel. Because 61 strength, 55 aggression is not great. It is not great at all. Let's just say that. But 87 stamina is more than enough to last throughout the whole 90 minutes in literally every single position. Now, today I have linked him up with uh, Williams. And I've also got likes of Alan, Suzoko and Bruno Fernandes. That somehow is still in my club. I have no idea where he came from. I literally went into my club, search, and I saw Bruno Fernandes. So I was like, why not? Let's play him today. Either way, Oyozaba will be playing in a 4-4-2 in the striker position. I don't feel like he's going to be amazing there because of those three-star skill moves. But we are going to give it a go. And he will be playing in his natural position down the wing in a 4-2-3-1. But let's get into the games. So the first thing I do want to try is how he feels on the ball. Hopefully he doesn't feel too bad. Him being 5 for 11 with great dribbling stats. I'm expecting someone to be very agile on the ball. Be able to do the little twists and turns. By just looking at that, I can tell he's going to be agile on the ball. But I didn't like how he lost the ball, you know, while under pressure. It was just one of those ones where I felt like the composure came into play a little bit there. And he kind of panicked on the ball. I'm going to get his pace going straight away because I do want to see that pace come into play. Oh, he's kind of got away of that, to be fair to him. Let's see that pace. Wambazaka is going to catch up. I'm going to go for that fake shot around the corner. Oh, my God. Look how fast he is. A little sweat across goal. And we are going to get the first assist of him. Do you see that pace? Wambazaka had no chance. That little fake shot around the corner absolutely sent him. Yeah, his dribbling is really nice. You can tell already the little, like, fake shots, the little touches, the R1 dribbling. Like, look at this. I'm going to tell him to get in behind. Hopefully, I can just pass him the hook ball. 
Go for that fake shot. Go for the fake shot once again. Fake the pass and go for the finish. I'm always going to be uncomfortable, especially with the three-star skill moves there. Because for me, if I had five-star skill moves there, I could have done so much to create an angle and probably get that shot off. Something I have noticed is his passing ability. Like, look at that. The complete switch, even though we did lose the header, it was still a really, really good pass. And I'm trying to question where that long passing really comes from because I've done that like two or three times now. I've done the little one-twos as well, and it looks like it's consistent. Once again, we're going to go for that switch off play. Look at it. It's literally spot on. And I feel like that's that vision coming into play. The fact that you can switch the ball like that. Hopefully, I can get a fake shot around the corner. I couldn't. Williams. Give it to Mikel. He's made a good run. Fake shot. Oh, come on. I've noticed his movement off ball is really, really good. And he does position himself perfectly in that striker position. That's a good run. That's a really good run. Can we get the first finish? I think it's going to be offside. It's not going to be offside. Now, I'm going to be honest. I wanted him to shoot that with his left foot just to curve it into the near post. But somehow, some way, he decides he wants to twist his whole body, hit it with that three-star weak foot. Hey, at least it went in. That's I'm not complaining too much. I told him to make a run. I'm just going to absolutely lace it and see if he can actually get him behind. Look at the fight. No, I feel like if he had a bit more aggression to his game, he could actually go in front of that. Going to go for that through ball once again and use that pace. And that is something I've noticed, right? You just send him on a run. You give him the ball and he's always going to get onto it no matter what. And that is something I'm absolutely loving from him. Now, when it comes down to the best position that he can actually play, I would definitely say without a doubt down the wing. The reason I say that is because you get in these awkward situations like that, like you don't really, you don't really know what to do in that striker position because he has got three-star skill moves. So he can't pull out like a Burber, he can't pull out a McGeady, a flip flap, a reverse flip flap. He can't do any of those skill moves. He's made another really good run. I'm going to try and flick this one. Flick it again. Flick it again. Oh, boys. Oh, stop it. Stop it, Mikel, because that is an amazing finish. But wow, the flicks is something I did not expect. Mikel on the ball. Going to go for that fake shot. That beautiful fake shot. I'm going to shoot a cross goal and he is going to move the keeper. That's just, you know, my opponent being smart, to be fair to him. Going to give this to Mikel. Going to go for a step over. Push it. Step over again. Fake shot. No, and that's what I mean. I, I just wish, I wish that he had four-star skill moves because if he did, I'm telling you, boys, the lack of ketters, the burber spins, the angles I can get with this guy would be honestly amazing. He's made a good run, a very good run, and he's got the pace as well to get him behind. The guy's going to try to take me out. I'm going to take it calm, wait for the guy to move the keeper this time because, hey, if you move the keeper against me one time, I'm always, always going to take my time the second time. It's just simple as that. He is down the line once again. Just send him the ball. Just make him run because this is what he literally does best. Just running, running, running. He does get away with that. Can I play this ball, please? Ah, oh, come on. Fatty to Mikel. Little dummy. Can I get around the corner? Yes, I can. Can I slot it towards the near post? I'm not going to lie to you guys, okay? I went for a fake shot. And somehow, some way, it shot the ball automatically. And what a finish. <laughs> How has he slot that straight past the keeper? I will never understand. But hey, it's a good finish either way, I guess. So it is time to review him. Two games played, four goals with the one assist as well. Now, I'm going to probably answer the question straight up. Is he worth it? I'm going to be honest. He is. Without a doubt, he is an amazing player. He's got a great finish to his game. He's got unbelievable pace with that Hunter Kem style. His dribbling is definitely top, top tier as well. And his passing ability was absolutely insane. If this card, I'm telling you right now, if this card had four star skill moves, how much better it would be is insane. But because it has that three star skill moves, it does limit on the angles that you can actually get to finish that ball in that striker position. But down the wing, trust me, it does not matter. The fake shots around the corners, him cutting into the inside with the R1 dribbling, it's honestly top, top tier. The, him being 5'11", he didn't have an issue with that at all. The high medium work rates allowed him to go for those quick counter attacks. Three star skill moves, I already mentioned. Three star weak foot. It was a bit awkward. I must admit, it was a bit awkward in most situations, but it did finish the ball, so I am going to be happy with it no matter what. Now, when it comes down to pace, I feel like his pace was hands down the best bit about him. How fast this card is, is ridiculous, and I am going to give him a 9.5 out of 10 for pace. 
for shooting ability. Now, you have to take into consideration when it comes down to the freestyle weak foot, it's never going to be consistent, right? So that is going to obviously, you know, hurt the overall for shooting a little bit. And But I'm still going to give him like a solid 8 out of 10 for shooting. It was top tier. You get it onto that left foot, it's going to go in. You get it onto the right foot, it's probably like a 30% a chance of going in, 40% chance of going in. So just take that into consideration. Now, when it comes down to passing, I was surprised. 79 long passing was switching the ball literally with that left foot like there was no tomorrow it was spot on every single time so for passing i am going to give him an 8.8 .8 out of 10 when it comes down to dribbling you obviously have to put the four you know the three star skill moves in there as well because i feel like that's a huge part to dribbling especially with like creating angles for goals and stuff like that ball control didn't have an issue with that at all beautiful touches kept the ball close to his feet as well which is definitely top tier I will give him, I will give him an 8.3 for dribbling. It was really nice, like really, really nice. I felt like the aggression is something that let him down though. I honestly feel like if he had a bit more aggression to his game, he would be insane, like insane. Because the thing is, right, he would obviously outpace the player. But the problem is he wouldn't get round the player. So, you know, it took, you know, it kind of allowed him to just sit behind him and it just didn't allow him to get in front of the ball. And that's a big problem I was having with him. But if we talk about physicals, I would definitely say like a 7 out of 10 just because he has stamina. But an overall rating out of 10, I'm going to be honest, I will give him an 8 out of 10, dead on, like dead on 8 out of 10. The thing is, like, he's an amazing card without a doubt. An amazing, amazing card because he's got all the stats. He's got everything he needs. The pace, the shooting, the passing, the dribbling. But the thing he has not got is those skill moves. So is he going to fit into my player's play style? Most likely not. Will he be a super sub for me in foot champs? Yes. Let me just tell you that right now. But I hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, leave a like, leave a comment. And for now, peace.